Warning, this video contains very disturbing subject matter and also graphic imagery. If you are sensitive to topics such as death, eating disorders, drug abuse, domestic violence, child abuse, sexual abuse, war and disfigurement, please do not watch this video as this video contains all of those topics. Well, I'm back. So after my last video doing extremely well, I've decided to cover another PSA iceberg and this iceberg is called the Disturbing PSAs Iceberg. Honestly, the amount of support I received on this new video is absolutely nuts because I didn't uploaded PSA related content in over six months on this channel and to get that much support, it's just absolutely insane, for real. So in this iceberg, there are six different tiers and as we go down the tiers, the more disturbing the PSAs are. Anyways, as I said in the last video, the timestamps are in the description of each tier in the iceberg and each different section of this whole video in general. And also a link to the iceberg is in the description. There is also a link to a Google doc in the description, which links to all of the PSAs in this iceberg. So if you want to watch any of them, you can just go on that Google doc and they all have the links to each PSA I mentioned in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Layer one, familiar grounds. Smokey Bear PSA campaign. Smokey Bear is an American PSA campaign telling the viewer that only you can prevent forest fires. This campaign in particular started when the US government lost the rights to use the Disney character Bambi for their forest fire PSAs in 1942. After losing the rights, Smokey Bear was finally created in 1944 and the long running slogan of the campaign, only you can prevent forest fires, was created in 1947 with ad cancel. There have been many different PSAs made using Smokey's likeness. Some are good and deliver a good message to the viewer, and there are some of the PSAs that are just... Be extra careful, okay? <laughs> if you knew it was me, would you have listened? I just don't know what to say about that. But even with weird PSAs like that, Smokey Bear is the longest running PSA campaign of all time. Tips for former smokers. A series of American PSAs under the company Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC for short, was released around 2012-2014. The PSAs center around people that have suffered the long-term effects of smoking, trying to give other smokers tips to deal with the effects they have. Terry Hall's PSAs are probably the most well-known out of this series of PSAs, but they all serve the same purpose, and that is trying to get people to stop smoking. The Real Cost Yet another series of PSAs from America. So this series of PSAs started in the 2010s and is trying to tell a viewer not to smoke by telling them the different things cigarettes do to your body. I think some of the most well-known PSAs are the ones from around 2014 where people will have to give up more than cash to pay for their cigarettes such as smooth skin and teeth. This campaign's still running to this day and they even had a PSA with Tony Hawk. By the way, the grinding with Tony Hawk PSA is just really bizarre. So yeah, I really don't have too much to say about this series of PSAs as I hadn't heard of it until now. Listen. This 60 second long PSA that aired at the time of the 2015 Super Bowl, which is apparently the first ever Super Bowl PSA to address domestic violence and sexual assault. The PSA lets us listen to a real phone call to the authorities where a female pretends that she is ringing a pizza shop to try and get out of an abusive situation. The PSA visualizes a house with a sink full of dishes, a messy bed, and a hole in the wall whilst we hear the phone call to get a good idea of why she is bringing the authorities. Text fades in at the end of the PSA to say, when it's hard to talk, it's up to us to listen. Partnership for a Drug Free America Partnership for a Drug Free America, a company that made plenty of PSAs trying to tell people not to do drugs, was founded in 1985. This company made so many different PSAs, from well-known ones like This Is Your Brain on Drugs, Cleaning Girl, and I learned it by watching you, to really weird, less well-known PSAs like Join the Party, yes, it's not cold ghoul, John Tron, Puppet Strings, and I'm Not a Chicken. The PSAs that Partnership for a Drug Free America made were shown to actually make more people do drugs, especially do marijuana, as in 1996, weed use had doubled in preteens. Also, Partnership for a Drug Free America got in trouble for receiving millions from tobacco and alcohol companies such as Jim Beam and Marlboro. Whoops. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth is a 1992 PSA from the Canadian company Concerned Children's Advertisers, who we will definitely talk about later. And it shows two different puppets in where one of them tries to eat everything until they sing a song about not putting things in your mouth. A pretty simple PSA telling kids not to put things in their mouth because they might be dangerous or hurt them, so I don't have much to say to be honest. Think. 
Think is a British company that was formed in 1946 to try and save more lives when on the road. They released their first PSA campaign in 1950, which is an animated short telling people how to be safer drivers in many different ways. Since then, Think has released many PSAs and even made a PSA with Adam West's Batman. Why did Adam West's Batman have to be in every 60s PSA ever? But Think definitely does have their fair share of disturbing PSAs such as Julie and It's 30 for a Reason. Crash Test Dummies Vince and Larry My personal favourite PSA campaign right here. I've gone in depth about this series of PSAs in the past, so if you want to check out the video where I do that, it is in the description. But anyways, in this video, I will give you a brief rundown of who Vince and Larry are and what the campaign is. So this American PSA campaign from Ad Council, yes, it is the same company that works on the Smokey Bear PSAs, decided to come up with a campaign to start getting people to buckle up, as only about 14% of people buckled up before this campaign started in 1985. Both Jim Ferguson and Joel McChack came up with the idea to create two crash test dummies that love to do their job of being a crash test dummy. They were originally going to make it more disturbing like the PSAs at the time, because yeah, this campaign did start in the mid 80s after all, but they ended up making it more lighthearted, which was a great approach. The campaign ended in 1997 and proved to be very successful and probably one of the most successful PSA campaigns of all time. The anti-drug slash above the influence. So both of these campaigns are American PSA campaigns trying to tell the viewer not to do drugs. Mostly weed, as most of the PSAs I could find from both of these companies just talk about marijuana. But these PSAs mainly showed up in the late 90s, early 2000s trying to tell the people to stay off drugs even though the company above the influence made some absolutely terrible PSAs like Meatbelt. I'm sorry, but a PSA like that will always be a meme. But from what I could gather, neither of these PSA campaigns did well. Pee Wee Herman. It's the infamous PSA that features Pee Wee Herman himself, Paul Rubens. Honestly, the backstory to this PSA is more interesting than the PSA itself. Basically, what happened to make Paul Rubens make PSAs in 1991 was that he was ordered by court to do 75 hours of community service, and with that community service, he decided to make two PSAs, this being one of them, after jacking off in an adult movie theater. With those 75 hours, he decided to make this PSA and another PSA featuring a character from Pee Wee's Playhouse called Penny. This Pee Wee Herman PSA is in a series of PSAs which are all basically the same but feature different celebrities such as Clint Eastwood, where they all talk about the dangers of crack cocaine. Layer 2. Less familiar PSAs. ACC Think Safe New Zealand Campaign The New Zealand series of PSAs from the early 2000s is a whole campaign around making sure people are safe around the house. All of these PSAs have the same kind of formula where it starts off lighthearted, presenting itself as an advertisement for a fake product until the main character falls into or off something, such as falling into a table, falling off a ladder, and falling down the stairs. Montana Meth Project Montana Meth Project is a well-known anti-meth organization started in 1999 that released a lot of anti-meth PSAs throughout the 2000s. They made a lot of PSAs and were shown to actually be quite effective when they started showing more of the disgusting things that meth does to you instead of trying to completely scare kids. Montana Meth Project does have some great PSAs such as Ben, Deep End, and Jessica, but they do have some very strange PSAs like everything else, which is the only PSA to have a corn song in it. Just thought I'd mention it. Sandy Hook Promise this series of PSAs was made after the Sandy Hook school shooting that took place on the 14th of December in 2012. Parents of the shooting victims came together to create this organization to make more people aware about school shootings. Their most well-known PSAs are definitely Back to School Essentials and Evan. In Back to School Essentials, kids talk to the camera about essential items for school until we hear a shooter in the school grounds as normal school items are used to help the students escape or to defend themselves. In the Evan PSA, it's focused around a normal school day where a boy ends up talking to a girl by writing on a desk in the library. They finally find out who each other are as the shooter enters the school gym. But the whole point of this PSA is to be aware of signs that someone might be planning a shooting. It doesn't do it that well in my opinion, but it's not a bad idea for a PSA. They've made quite a few PSAs since their creation in 2012 and they're still going today. Heaven Can Wait a 2002 PSA from the company Axion in Belgium centers around a few guys in a car crashing into a tree. They all seem to be dead until we see their spirits of all the people in the car start to rise. All of the spirits go into the sky except for the passenger that kept his seatbelt on because his spirit goes back into his body after he wakes up to his friends dead in the car. The PSA ends with the text, Heaven can wait, belt up. Youth Ambassadors KC 
The Youth Ambassadors KC is a company from Kansas City trying to help kids that grow up in any bad situations. And the PSAs most people know from them are the Lessons from My Neighborhood PSAs. They're all meant to be like Sesame Street, even down to having puppets that look like they were built by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. There are three different PSAs under this campaign, and they're each focused on different topics. One is about a kid starving and how to avoid feeling hungry, another focus on how to dodge bullets when being shot at, and the last one focuses on dealing with an overdose. Youth Ambassadors KC has also made another series of PSAs called Welcome to My Neighborhood, which talks about the same kinds of topics, but has their kids tell the stories as pictures show up il illustrating their stories. The Spirit of Dark and Lonely Water I talked about this PSA in my last iceberg video, so I will keep it quite brief. This is a public information film, or PIF for short, from 1973 where a hooded figure, meant to be the Green Reaper, follows a few kids playing in near water as some of the kids fall in and die. This is until one of the kids falls in and gets saved by a group of kids nearby and the message is trying to be pushed to children is to be careful around water. Truth An American company based in Florida that was formed in 1998 tries to make people stop smoking. Truth focused more on the youth of America and aimed their PSAs more around them so they can try and stop them from smoking before they start. Honestly, that approach became extremely obvious by the time they made that meme-filled cringe PSA because at that point you could really tell that they're trying to pander to the youth and they basically just became the how do you do fellow kids meme. Truth released their first PSA in the year 2000 and actually proved to be effective throughout the 2000s as they didn't try to scare people and all they did was tell the viewer that tobacco can hurt you. I would honestly like to go over Truth's PSAs in a separate video and talk about how they did so well and how they fell off so fast because I find that so interesting how a company was doing so well delivering the message just fell so fast. Concerned Children's Advertisers This Canadian company, which I mentioned earlier in the Don't You Put It In Your Mouth PSA, made plenty of PSAs throughout the 90s and early 2000s trying to educate children about different topics. Their most well-known PSAs are probably Hip Choice, with those weird, fucked up looking puppets, House Hippo, that probably bamboozled millions of kids throughout the US and Canada, and Don't You Put It In Your Mouth, as I mentioned before. Concerned Children's Advertisers has made some absolutely great PSAs such as Rehab and The Trap, which are honestly a masterpiece. WSIB slash preventit.ca Yet another Canadian organization making PSAs. But this company focuses on being safe around the workplace, with their most well-known PSA definitely being Top Chef. WSIB made most of their PSAs in 2007, but did release a PSA in 2009, but besides from those 7 PSAs, there haven't been any other PSAs from the company. Which is honestly quite strange to think that this company only made PSAs for about 2 years. But even with the company releasing barely any PSAs, they definitely are remembered mainly for Top Chef. Layer 3. In the Water. Jacqueline. A PSA released from the Texas Department of Transport in 2004 shows a woman holding up an old picture of her before she got into a car accident caused by a drunk driver. She explains how she ended up in the situation and what happened to her until she pulls down the photo to show her after the accident. Honestly, just find this PSA to be extremely depressing because it's so sad that someone has to deal with something like this for the rest of their life. Jacqueline got into an accident back in 1999 and after the accident she had this PSA air and also made an appearance on Oprah in 60 minutes. Unfortunately, Jacqueline died of cancer on the 20th of April in 2019. May she rest in peace. Fire Kills This British company that started in 1988 mainly tries to warn people about dangers of fire and mostly how dangerous house fires can be. Fire Kills has some well-known PSAs such as Victim, Night Vision and On Your Child's Life. They have made some absolutely great PSAs that are very well done, such as the ones I mentioned before, but they also do have some very weird PSAs, such as Pull Your Finger Out. You could go to the loo, make a copper, or save your family from dying. Pull your finger out. Like, what the fuck is this? Operation Trident. Operation Trident is a metropolitan police unit in the UK set up in the 1998 to try and tackle mostly gun crime. They release a few different PSAs tackling gun crime, such as people not telling authorities when they know someone has a gun, imprisonment because of gun crime, and being charged for gun possession. Human Ball A Belgian PSA from Doctors Without Borders is an animated short where a man starts rolling and after falling over, and more and more people get caught in this rolling ball. The ball gets bigger and bigger, going all across the country until it ends with the ball being massive, rolling over heaps of people in the city, 
as it's about to squish the woman singing, Tex fades in saying, don't let AIDS gain more ground. Everyone must have access to treatment. TAC TAC, or the Transport Accident Commission, is an Australian company based in Victoria that tries to prevent car accidents from happening. TAC are well known for their PSAs covering many different topics about driving such as drunk driving, driving on drugs, and speeding to name a few. They've made some great PSAs throughout the years such as curtain airbags, what happens when you wipe five off, and if you drive on drugs you're out of your mind, to name a few. But as of recent, they've made some really bad PSAs such as Heavenly Gates, a trial before the king and the lucky ones get caught. Also, I want to mention one awesome thing that TSA has done for the past 10 years, and that is the split second film competition. It's basically a competition where people can conceptualize and script a PSA for the company once every year. And I found it really cool and really interesting myself, so I decided to enter it last year. I did talk about it a bit. Um, I'm going to leave links in the description to what I worked on, actually, so you guys can check out what I've done if you want to. It is just, it's just a really fun thing to do, even though I didn't win, obviously, to die for one instead, which is a great PSA. I actually really enjoy it. I thought it was a great pick for the winner, but it's a great thing to do. It's a great thing that TAC does, and they actually give people prize money for that as well for winning and making their PSA a reality. Yeah, I'll quickly touch on those PSAs as two of the bad PSAs I mentioned are from this competition, but there are some great ones such as Yes Mum from 2012 and last year's winner To Die For. Also, I might have to try and replicate that drink in To Die For. Knack AIDS, another Aussie company, nice. But this company ran a campaign from 1984 to 1988 all about AIDS and how it can be easily spread during the epidemic. The most well-known PSA by far is definitely the bowling PSA with the Grim Reapers bowling people down. When the PSA released, it was quite a controversial PSA that I talked about in my most controversial PSAs video. Also, just now I found out that the creator of the PSA, Simone Reynolds, just was just thinking of bowling, so that's why he made this PSA around bowling. The bowling PSA cost the company around 300,000 Australian dollars, which is about 750,000 nowadays, and they actually made a seven foot tall bowling ball and the cast were advised to fall to the side so the ball wouldn't crush them. Sounds really safe. Knack Aids did release another PSA with a couple playing Russian roulette as a metaphor for having sex without a condom and rolling a dice to see if you get HIV. Clunk Click This series of British PSAs is a campaign telling people to buckle up. The PSAs usually show some kind of car accident where people will go through the windshield or something else. The three PSAs I could find under this campaign all cover the same topic of buckling up as you shouldn't take the risk. Mothers Against Drunk Driving MADD. Mothers Against Drug Driving or MADD is an organization that's trying to stop drunk driving. This company started back in 1980 after a mother of a 13 year old girl died from a drunk driver in a hit and run incident. The company released some PSAs throughout the 90s and 2000s telling people that they shouldn't be drunk driving by showing them what could happen if you do it. NSPCC. This company is a British company out to protect children of any kind of dangers. NSPCC started making PSAs around the 90s, which are mostly about child abuse and child sexual abuse, and still makes PSAs to this day. Some of their most well-known PSAs are Cartoon, Can't Look, Excuses, and I Saw Your Willy. I honestly can't think of one bad NSPCC PSA because they all deliver their message across quite well. DOE slash RSA. So both DOE and RSA are Irish companies that make PSAs about the dangers of driving, if it is drink driving, speeding, or anything else. The one difference between these two PSA companies is that DOE made one of the worst PSAs of all time, and it's just fucking hilarious. The Shame On You PSA, which is meant to be disturbing, but ends up being absolutely hilarious with how fake and far-fetched the ending is. But RSA, on the other hand, have just made solid PSAs. I do not have any complaints for them. Drinking and Driving Rex Lives A series of PSAs that all tied to this campaign, which is Drinking and Driving Rex Lives. This series of PSAs were mostly released around the 90s, and all of the PSAs showed in different ways how drinking and driving can ruin lives from yours to others around you. The most well-known PSA in this campaign by far is definitely Dave, which I talked about in my last PSA Iceberg video. Smurfs Another PSA I talked about in my last Iceberg video, so this 2005 UNICEF PSA from Belgium was actually approved by the Smurfs creator Peo in centers around Smurf Village being bombed and the whole village turning into a war zone. One thing that I also didn't mention about this PSA is that it would only air after 9pm to avoid children seeing this PSA about the Smurfs. 
There isn't too much to say about this PSA, to be completely honest. It's just weird that it exists in the first place. Get the keys slash don't let your friends drive drunk. Another PSA series from Ad Cancel? Damn, how many PSA campaigns did they run? But anyways, this series mostly aired around the 90s and most of the PSA centered around showing footage of a drunk driving victim before the accident and text showing up telling the viewer that they died by a drunk driver either on a certain date or before a special event. I'm honestly just surprised with how many PSAs they actually made. There were heaps of these and I didn't even know about like 90% of these, but they are quite effective, so I'm not dissing them at all. Layer 4, Deep Sea. Peter Pan. So this British PSA from COI is an audio PSA that played on the radio from time to time. This PSA plays at the events of a car crash where kids go flying out of the car and the narrator mentions that one of the characters wishes they could fly like Peter Pan. It's just a PSA that tells the events of a car crash while whimsical music is playing in the background. I don't know what else to say about this PSA since there is next to no information about this PSA at all. I couldn't even find a release date for this PSA. Queensland Transport This company is an Australian company quite like TSA but in Queensland instead of Victoria. Yeah, that's pretty much it. But besides from that, Queensland Transport started making PSAs in the late 90s and all throughout the 2000s with their most popular PSA definitely being Pram. All of Queensland Transport's PSAs are quite the same as most of them are all about speeding and the terrible things that can happen if you're speeding and not driving responsibly. As I mentioned before, it is literally TAC, but not as good. WorkSafe Victoria Yet another Aussie company based in Victoria, but this company was made for the safety of workers in any work environment. The most well-known WorkSafe Victoria PSAs released around the late 2000s, early 2010s with PSAs like Beth, Bakery, and the Top Chef ripoff called Kitchen. WorkSafe Victoria still makes PSAs to this day, and their most recent PSA I've seen, which came out last year, is all about workers being harassed and abused in their workplace. In Victoria, some of their PSAs are some of the most well-known PSAs up there with like TAC and the Bowling Knack AIDS PSA. AIDS is a mass murderer. AIDS is a mass murderer is a campaign from the German company Regenbrogen. I probably fucking butchered that. Which was out to tell people how dangerous getting AIDS is. This campaign is mostly known for releasing an extremely controversial PSA in 2009, which I unfortunately didn't cover in my most controversial PSAs video, because if I knew about this PSA, it would have definitely been in that video. But this PSA features a man and a woman doing the deed, until at the end of the PSA, we see the man's face, which ends up being Adolf Hitler as the campaign's text shows up. I'm telling you now that Germany makes some absolutely wild PSAs, which we will get onto a few later on in this iceberg. But I can honestly see why this PSA was controversial for using Hitler's likeness. Also, to be completely honest, I do think this PSA gets the message across in a decent way that AIDS takes a lot of people's lives away. Dejeros a Zero This PSA was released in the year 2000 by the Quebec company SAAQ, and it shows real footage of a car spinning off the road as it's going 200km an hour. I just find it interesting that this PSA used real footage caught from a teen's camera, probably a part of their friend group gone spinning off the road. Text fades in after, which translated into English, says Matt Hayu died in April 14, 2000 after losing control of his vehicle at 200 km an hour. Sad stuff, honestly. Scream. A British PSA from the company Samaritans that released in 1989 follows a woman in a vaguely familiar looking room where she's trying to talk to the camera, but all that's coming out is distorted guitar sounds. This keeps on going on as she starts getting upset and starts to break down, as she's trying to talk but can't. She ends up breaking down when the text the Samaritans understand fades in, and more lighthearted music fades in when the text fades in. I've talked about this PSA a few times in the past, as I really do think this is a very good and effective PSA. Monolith slash Iceberg Both Monolith and Iceberg are PSAs from 1987 and 1986, both from the National Health of the UK respectively, and both talk about how dangerous AIDS is. In the monolith PSA, we see some natural disasters and then a man carving something as the narrator talks about how dangerous AIDS is and how you can get the disease. The PSA ends with a carving showing that it is AIDS and the narrator tells the viewer to read the pamphlet and not to die of ignorance. The iceberg PSA has a camera pan around the tip of the iceberg as text shows up stating how AIDS can be spread and that it's just the tip of the iceberg. After that, the camera goes under the water to see that AIDS is engraved into the iceberg and it ends the same way as the monolith PSA with the PSA telling the viewer to read the pamphlet as it can save your life. RSPCA 
RSPCA is yet another British company making PSAs, but this company was made to try and help animals, find homes, and get out of dangerous households. This company was founded all the way back in 1824, almost 200 years ago, but they started making PSAs around the late 80s, all the way up until the 2010s. Their most well-known PSAs are definitely How Much Is That Doggy at the Window, My Little Puppy, and Yard. The first two PSAs I mentioned are known for being absolutely insane. Also, the interesting thing about RSPCA is that different countries release their own PSAs under RSPCA. So say RSPCA UK will have their own PSAs and RSPCA in Australia will have their own PSAs. And in my opinion, Australia does it better. The UK RSPCA PSAs mainly just try to scare the viewer or shock them without giving the viewer much information about what they can do to try and help animals. RSPCA in Australia, on the other hand, only has one PSA that tries to scare viewers, and besides from that, they're all just lighthearted and actually tell the viewer how you can help those animals. What it's like to. A 1999 campaign under the British company DETR follows a few different perspectives in a car crash. They released four PSAs all in 1999, which three of them focus around the person that caused the car crash, and the other PSA titled Michael Molly focuses on around the victim's parents. All of the PSAs follow the same kind of formula where the PSA asks the people a question. In the three PSAs about the people that caused the accidents, the question is what is it like to kill someone? And for the Mike and Molly PSA, the question is what is it like to lose someone? All these PSAs are absolutely fantastic. And personally, I think the Mike and Molly PSA is the most effective. The reason why I think it's the most effective is you get to actually hear the victim's parents talk about how horrible it is to deal with a daughter that passed away. All of these PSAs end with the text, please don't drink and drive as all of the accidents in these PSAs happen from someone drinking and driving. I really think that these PSAs are just really effective because it just feels so real and they just let people talk about their situations in these incidents. GLC So the GLC is the Greater London Council and this council sometimes partnered up with organizations like COI to create PSAs and in one particular PSA that I could find from the 1980s is one where an old couple are going to bed as they leave the chimney fire lit. A narrator starts talking and telling the viewer not to leave fires lit, and when the old couple leave the fire spreads until eventually the whole house is on fire as we see it from the outside of the house. NIFRS This is an Irish company that stands for the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service, and they made some PSAs around the mid-2000s to tell people to be fire safe by not leaving things on an unattended. There are two PSAs I could find, one where a man leaves a pot on and the other where a fire brigade is in a burnt down house as they find out that a kid died in a house fire because their family didn't have a plan to escape. There isn't really much info about this PSAs or this company at all, so I don't really have too much to say. MTV PSAs I bet you're reading that title and thinking, what? MTV actually made some PSAs? Well, yes but not in America. Basically, the MTV PSAs that were made were actually made in Italy, and most of these PSAs came out around the 2000s. There are two PSAs I could find, and one of them is a couple in a cornfield making out, and eventually start going at it until one of those massive cornfield cutters runs them over, and text pops up saying unprotected sex can be dangerous. The other PSA I found follows a man in a nightclub bathroom as he tries to walk out of the bathroom. He ends up back in one of the toilets, continuing the same cycle over and over again until we see him stop behind a wall as text pops up saying 68% of drug users think they can always get out of it. Layer 5. It's time to stop. Tentacle. Tentacle is a German PSA released in 2008 by the company Dunkelziffer, yeah my pronunciation sucks, and it tackles the long term effects of child sexual abuse by using a tentacle as a metaphor for the events the main character remembers. The PSA follows a young girl with the tentacle staying on her as she grows up. The girl keeps getting older and older as the tentacle stays with her until she's an old woman that eventually passes away. The tentacle only leaves when she passes away as text fades in saying if sexually abused children never get help, they never outgrow their trauma. This is just one of those PSAs that makes my skin crawl. No brainer. A 2003 PSA from the New Zealand company Care NZ follows a man at a nightclub going to walk into a bathroom. He makes it to the men's bathroom, goes for one of the stalls, and locks the door. We then see the man pull the top of his head back in to reveal his brain as he grabs a bit of his brain to line it up like it's cocaine on the toilet seat lid. The man cuts it up and then snorts his brain, and after he does, then we see that his pupils get bigger. As text fades in saying, every day, more and more people are lining up to destroy themselves. 
This PSA is obviously telling the viewer that drugs like cocaine destroy your brain and every time you do it, you're basically snorting away a bit of your brain. Speed of Fire Yet another series of New Zealand PSAs, but these PSAs were from 2002 and trying to tell people to be safe around fire. These PSAs mainly try to show the viewer that the spread of fire is extremely unpredictable. This PSA had two different versions, one where the PSA is played full start to finish and the other that cut itself up throughout the three minutes, letting ads play in between different segments of the PSA. Honestly, it's just such an awesome idea to do that. Just to have the PSA broken into segments where say the PSA will start for about 10, 15 seconds, then there'll be a 30 second ad and then more will play and then back and forth and back and forth until the PSA ends. It's such a great idea, especially for a concept like this where time is passing by, it really works to realize how quick that time goes by and how fast a fire can spread. So yeah, the fire spreads more and more until the whole house ends up in a blaze as the New Zealand Fire Service logo shows up. Faroe Islands Faroe Islands is a British PSA from the Whale and Dolphin Conservation, which was released in 1989 and has Anthony Hopkins narrating this PSA. Yes, Hannibal himself narrates this PSA. But this PSA is an animated PSA which is animated with paintings and is quite unique because of that. But the narrator tells the story of the Faroe Islands where people from far and wide come to the islands to kill and cut up the whales for them all to eat. When the people in the story kill the whales and feed them to the people, the rest of the whales are left on the beach to rot. The PSA ends with the company's logo and I still find it cool that Anthony Hopkins narrated this PSA because he's got such a great voice. Photograph this is a Scottish PSA from the company Scotland Against Drugs that was released in 1996, showing a teenager in a photograph slowly deteriorating over time. So at first some spots appear in his face as well as his teeth rotting to make himself look worse. The picture then changes to a video of the teenager looking stressed before it changes back to an image of the teen. More video then shows the teen stressing out and nearly having an anxiety attack until the photo changes to the teen becoming deformed with a bit of Photoshop's liquify tool. The photo then slowly fades to black. I'm going to be honest here and say that the ending really ruins this PSA for me. I find it to be way too cartoony and fake to be taken seriously at all. 2000s EPA Mercury PSA So this is a random 2000s PSA I've never seen before, but the PSA has a narrator talk about mercury and how dangerous of a substance it really is. The PSA talks about how much mercury can spread around very fast and there's a skull that talks to the viewer about how much it can spread and that the EPA can deal with the mercury properly and if you see it, you should call them immediately. I don't find this PSA to be scary in the slightest. Is it because of that chrome skull? If so, that's pretty ridiculous. Also, the original narrator sounds like George Lucas. Why? SWR SWR or Southwest Rundfunk I probably fucked that up too. Is a broadcasting station in Germany that broadcasts radio and TV stations. The station was founded in 1998, but from 1999 to early 2000s, they started making and airing PSAs on their own radio and television stations. Some of their most well known PSAs are Day Trip, Amok, and Nightmare. Day Trip is by far their most well known PSA, where a father and son walk around a city and see disturbing things like a man that was hit by a car a fistfight and a woman possibly being wrapped. But PSAs like a mock are just extremely distasteful, making the Columbine school shooting which happened in 1999 into a video game to say that video games cause school shootings. Yeah, that definitely aged well since studies have shown that this isn't the case at all. SWR hasn't made any good PSAs and the PSAs they've made either seem to not deliver their messages across well at all or just don't understand what they're talking about. Mirror a Swedish PSA from the company Anorexi Bulimi Contact, released in 2007, shows a young girl looking at herself in a mirror and seems to be unsatisfied with how she looks. We see this as she's grabbing parts of her body thinking that she's overweight and unhealthy. This is until the camera pans back to show that the girl in the PSA is actually anorexic and sees herself in a different way to how she actually looks as text fades in saying to help people with eating disorders. It's a twist ending PSA, but I think it's really well done because it delivers the message across very well. Scavengers Yet another PSA I've talked about in the last Iceberg video. This is a PSA released in 1987 from the UK company Lynx. It follows a fly flying around the city until it gets into a room with a bunch of rich people when we see the camera switching back and forth from the fly's perspective to the rich people. We see the fly nibble on something until a rich couple pulls back the fur coat and we see a bunch of guts underneath the coat with heaps of flies in it. The PSA ends with text popping up saying, when animals are killed for their fur, two kinds of scavengers move in. The difference is that flies don't know better. Stairs and Neighbours 
Both of these PSAs are from the Family Violence Prevention Fund, an ad cancel for, from sometime in the 1990s. So the stairs PSA follows a kid sitting at the top of the stairs as they are listening to their parents argue. We then hear that the father starts to abuse his mother because his father didn't get any pizza. This is the weird part about this PSA. It's actually sponsored by Pizza Hut and that's why the couple mentions pizza. It's no joke, look it up. In this PSA, we only see the kid watching his parents argue and we get to see the amount of shock in his face throughout the whole situation. And the PSA ends with the text, children have to sit by and watch, what's your excuse? So the neighbor's PSA follows a couple in bed as they can hear a couple arguing in the apartment above them. We then hear that the woman is being abused as the couple in bed don't do anything about it and try to go to sleep. After this happens, text fades in saying it is your business. Action Man Action Man's a PSA that I always thought was meant to be a parody video. Well, this is an actual PSA made by the Veterans of a Peace in the UK talking about how after war, usually people need help but end up doing other things such as abusing substances to deal with their PTSD they get from war. The whole PSA is framed to be a parody of the old G.I. Joe commercials with the 80s graphics and even having a doll to show that some people deal with memories of war. There are a few of these PSAs with one centering a man, man that abuses substances and eventually hangs himself, another about a paraplegic in a wheelchair that shows how he has to deal with life after war, and another about a dead action man figure that you have to take care of and identify who the doll is and eventually bury. Amnesty International PSAs so I had never seen these PSAs, but they're extremely strange. One of these PSAs follows a bunch of leaders blowing for some reason, such as Saddam Hussein, Kim Jong-il, and a few others. It might be just me, but I actually don't get the point of this PSA. Another PSA shows a man putting together a pencil like it's a gun, with the PSA ending with a text of your signature as our weapon. And another one I will mention is a PSA that's framed like one of those TV shows that would sell overpriced junk. Instead of selling junk, they end up telling the viewer that they're selling 100,000 AK-47s for the price of £474.99. It's absolutely wild, and throughout the PSA we see units sold go up to 9,237. This text fades in saying the arms trainer is out of control. This company has heaps of PSAs worldwide, but I would be here forever if I talked about all of them. Apaches. This is a 1977 film that's mostly shown around schools to tell kids to be safe when playing. Throughout the PSA, we see kids playing cowboys and Indians as the kids get killed off one by one in different areas of a farm. Kim is run over by the tractor that she was standing on. Tom drowns in what I just found out to be called a slurry pit. Sharon dies from accidentally drinking chemicals when pretending it was alcohol. Robert gets crushed by a falling gate Michael accidentally knocked over. And lastly, Danny crushes a tractor he is riding into a ditch. Danny continues narrating after his death and talks calmly about how his family are all arriving for a party, being prepared earlier in the film. After all that, text comes up with different kids that died on farms in the same year that Patches was made. Luke Starler Luke Starler is a man that is suffering with AIDS and in this PSA we see him trying to get out of bed as he's struggling. We see that he has stage 9 AIDS and it takes him a whole PSA just to get out of bed as we hear him and how much he's struggling just to get up. The PSA ends with the text and you think it's hard to get out of bed to get a condom. Consumer Safety Institute a company from the Netherlands that made PSAs about several different topics. Some of their most well-known PSAs are Stadium Fire, Eye Candy, and Rocket. Which, yes, I did find the Rocket PSA from the last iceberg. But Stadium Fire shows footage of a real Stadium Fire next to a lit cigarette and shows how the speed of fire is unpredictable and that you should always be prepared. Eye Candy is a PSA where they make inedible things look like delicious food, such as mothballs with bleach and shoe polish with fire lighters. In the Rocket PSA, a kid is lighting fireworks as the narrator is talking about what the characters are doing. The narrator ends up asking what are you doing wrong and then the rocket falls over and hits the girl. Tex comes in to say to secure bottles by filling them with sand or water and that windy weather conditions increase accident rates by 48%. ECPAT ECPAT is an international company that is trying to end sexual exploitation of children. I found a few of their PSAs such as child sexual exploitation as a crime and where the PSA follows a few different girls that are being exploited for sex as their ages come up next to them. The PSA ends with an underage girl naked in bed as the authorities storm the building. A picture of the man with her shows up with a text saying 10 years covering his face. More text comes up saying sexual relations with a minor means prison and it lists off a few names of people that got prison time for this reason. Another PSA which is from Australia follows a man talking to his wife about how he'll be back home soon and it all seems normal until we see the camera slowly pan back and we see an underage girl sitting in the bed with him. Layer 6. Have fun sleeping. Sunday Lunch. 
Another PSA in my last PSA iceberg video, but it's a 2006 PSA made by the Southwark Council, shows a family having lunch at a table. Everything seems normal until the mother pulls out a gun and shoots his youngest son in the head. Obviously, the whole family is horrified and you can hear them crying and one of them actually throws up after seeing his youngest son shot in the head. Tex fades in as you hear the crying saying, if you keep quiet about gun crime, it's like pulling the trigger yourself. This PSA is just absolutely wild. I really don't know what else to say. Night Vision This PSA from Fire Kills in 2004 follows a few different scenarios where people in a house fire don't know what to do and end up being stuck in the house. They also tell you to make sure that you have your exits clear in case of a house fire. The PSA ends with the text make your plan, and it's quite an effective PSA to be honest. Nightmare One of my most favourite PSAs and it's done very well. This is a Scottish PSA from the Scottish Office Fire Safety from 1995 and shows the events of a man's nightmare where a house fire is occurring as we see a photo of the man's family burning. We hear the kids screaming throughout the PSA as the photo switches from being a normal photo to a video of the family begging for help as the man's trying to reach out for them. We see them disappear one by one until a man wakes up alone in his bed full of sweat. His alarm was beeping when he woke up, so he turns it off and grabs the photo of his family on his bedside table. The man looks at the photo and holds it up against himself as the narrator tells the viewer to always check their smoke alarm and to plan your escape or you might live to regret it. Brazilian Partnership Against Drugs A series of PSAs from Brazil were meant to be on the list for obscurity according to the iceberg creator. In one of the PSAs called Rewind, the events of gun violence go in reverse where a woman got shot in the head in a car and it goes back to where we see the perpetrator got the gun from and it follows how that money came along to get a gun and it came from selling drugs. In another PSA called Simon, it focuses on a Simon Says game in which someone's playing it and it fails on the second level. Text fades in to say marijuana almost inoffensive. In the last PSA I'll mention called Board Game, three kids are playing a game in which punishments they get in the game seem to be serious things like stealing a car and stealing from your mother. It ends with one of the kids in the game getting an overdose card so they're out of the game. The PSA is meant to be a metaphor for life and that you shouldn't treat your life like a game. Embryo Embryo is a really bizarre PSA from the Ministry of Transport in the Czech Republic from 2008. In this PSA we follow a horrible looking fetus in which we see it react to the woman's partner speeding. The fetus is swinging back and forth in the womb until it gets flipped around and dies because the couple got into a car accident. Then the text fades in saying, do not decide about other life other than their aggressive driving. Never seen this PSA before this iceberg, but I don't like how that fetus looks. It just looks off-putting. Hansel and Gretel Foundation PSA In this PSA by the company Hansel and Gretel Against Child Abuse, released in 2000s in Denmark, we hear a girl laughing as we see a page in a fairy tale book of an old man and what's meant to be Gretel. As we hear the girls laugh, we hear the woman say, what do you hear? Do you hear a little girl having an orgasm? If so, we'll do everything we can to put you in jail. The laughing stops, and the woman says, if not, please donate. And yet again, this is another PSA I talked about before, so I wanted to be a bit quick and brief with this PSA. Alone. A 1993 PSA from the company AIDS Information Center in Japan shows an animation of an arrow getting approached by a man as it starts to move. The man gets attracted to the arrow and even starts to hump an arrow, obviously symbolizing sex. The arrow seems to confess something to the partner, and after pulling on the arrow, the text AIDS comes up. A crowd of people come up to him and the text AIDS, and the man explains something to them. As he does, the text of AIDS says goodbye to symbolize that the partner has died from AIDS. As this happens, two people come up to him and tell him that they won't leave him alone. This PSA is kind of strange, but it's also kind of sweet. Why is this down here? I wasn't scared at all. I want to be scared, god damn it! C. This is a company from the Netherlands that released quite a few fireworks PSAs around the 90s and 2000s. The most well known PSAs are definitely Countdown, Shadow Puppets, and Sign Language. Countdown's a PSA from 1996 that tells people not to mess with fireworks by counting down from 10. When the PSA is counting down, you can see two hands slowly lose fingers as the numbers go down until eventually no fingers are left at the end of the PSA. Text fades in that is written in Dutch, but translates to only jerks mess with fireworks. In Shadow Puppets, there are two hands creating shadow puppets of animals such as a dove, a swan, and a rabbit. This keeps going on until at the end of the music slows down as we see that a person's missing one hand. The PSA ends with the same text as the last PSA, which is under the whole campaign, only jerks mess with fireworks. In the sign language PSA, it has the same background as the countdown PSA with the full red background, but this time the PSA is talking to us in sign language. 
The PSA is telling us about firework victims and how they lose their hearing and receive serious injuries. As this is happening, the hand slowly loses fingers and the sign language gets harder and harder to understand because of that. The campaign text fades in for the PSA as well, but it's in English this time. Ooh. Innocence in danger. Apparently, this is meant to be a French organization that is dedicated to keeping kids safe on the internet. They supposedly made a few TV PSAs and some print ads, but I couldn't find anything of the sorts at all. Shoeboxes. Shoeboxes is a PSA from the company Africare Rwanda Relief, appeal in 1995. In this PSA, we see footage of African children either walking around or upset, as the PSA tells us we know you hate giving money, so please send us your old shoeboxes. After that is said, we see dead people all over the ground, and more text fades in saying we're running out of coffins. I really don't think this PSA is extremely disturbing, but it's mainly disturbing because it shows real footage of bodies and the real situation that some people unfortunately have to deal with whilst living in Africa and under poverty. Searching The fire prevention PSA from the 1974 in the UK shows someone walking around a burnt down house as we hear audio of people yelling out to each other echoing. The man keeps walking around the house as well as seeing how badly the house is burnt down. The PSA ends in one of the bedrooms as the video burns to text saying keep matches away from children. Biggie Bear PSAs A series of PSAs made in 2004 from South Africa made by the company Parents for Responsible Viewing shows the viewer different acts that shouldn't be shown to kids, which is a part of their slogan for these PSAs, what is your child learning from television? Biggie Bear Surprise shows us Biggie Bear trying to cheer up one of his friends Mr. Spotty by injecting some kind of drugs into his arm. Biggie Bear says hello, introduces a new character Mr. Rabbit, and it shows him coming in to say hi to the kids. Of course, Biggie Bear doesn't like this, so he ends up beating and killing Mr. Rabbit by shooting him. The last PSA, Biggie Bear Meets a Friend, shows Biggie Bear meeting a new person called Miss Pussycat, which after talking to her, he ends up grabbing her and wrapping her. Baby Monitor. Yet another PSA that's in my last iceberg video. This is a South African PSA released in 2003 from the company Women Against Child Abuse, shows a mother listening to a baby monitor where her partner sexually abuses their child. The mother starts to cry as she hears the narrator come in to say, if you don't stop him from raping her, who will? SITEA. SITEA is a company from Argentina known for making this 1991 PSA called Mascaras, which is an anti-alcohol PSA. In this PSA, we see a man laughing with a mask on, which honestly, the music reminds me of Sonic CD. I don't know what it is, but it's just same vibes. It's kind of a banger. But this PSA keeps going on where the man in the mask keeps drinking and laughing, but the music starts to speed up more and more until the man turns around and we see a sad face. The PSA ends with a happy and the sad mask next to each other on the ground as a narrator narrates in Espanol. I don't know exactly what he's saying, but please let me know in the comments. Partnership for a drug-free Singapore. A company well known for making anti-drug PSAs throughout the late 90s. Their most well known PSAs are Rats, Blender and You're the Guinea Pig. In the Rats PSA we see a man in chains as the narrator talks about how people used to be tortured by getting eaten alive by rats. We then see this happen as well in the PSA as it's used as a metaphor for what heroin does to your body. The PSA ends with the text, 4 out of 5 people who try heroin never escape, heroin is a living hell. In the Blender PSA it shows the brain in a blender and then the man puts ecstasy in the blender of the brain. The narrator asks, ever wonder what ecstasy does to your brain, and as he asks that, they turn the blender on. Now personally, my most favorite PSA of all time, you're the guinea pig. It shows a man being tested on while strapped down in a chair with a bunch of scientists around him. They're testing the effects of ecstasy on the man whilst the narrator says no one knows how much brain damage ecstasy causes and that it's still being tested. The PSA ends with the line, take ecstasy and you're the guinea pig, and it fades out as the man in the chair is struggling to get out. Sedi Drogi Tespengi. This campaign from Italy is trying to get people not to use drugs and it's very strange. So I could only find three different PSAs about this campaign. All these PSAs have someone's head spinning around in a circle until their head spins back and their eyes are completely white. Like a Sonic.exe ripoff. I've never heard of these PSAs before but they're absolutely wild because this is meant to make people not want to do drugs. I personally can't find why this PSA is meant to be about drugs. Is it because their eyes turned completely white when on drugs? The whole iceberg is done. This iceberg was actually much better overall compared to the last one I covered. Yet again, there are some PSAs that I'll change around on this list and some I would add as well, but this list is just a much better list because it has quite a bit of variety and different unique PSAs in it too. And I feel like most of the PSAs in their tiers are justified. I really hope you all enjoy this video as much as I actually enjoyed making this video. And if you did, please like the video, it does help me out, it does help get me in the other algorithm and all, all of that jazz. 
and also please subscribe. I really appreciate it. We're over 1,600 subs now. It is just absolutely nuts. The amount of subs we've been gaining since this new video, I've gained over 100 subs in like six days. It is absolutely nuts. But anyways, I'll catch you on the next one.